This week we're going to look at one of the new features of MetPy 1.4, which is being able to make arrow plots with the declarative interface. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I wanted to show you one of the new features of MetPy 1.4 and tell you that MetPy 1.4 is out, so don't forget to run a Conda update MetPy. There are lots of new features, we'll be talking about some of them over the coming weeks, but it dawned on me that we haven't really talked about the declarative plotting interface in a while, and it is a very powerful interface and makes it very easy for someone transitioning from Gympack or even if you're not transitioning from Gempack, it just is a nice shorthand to be able to make these quick basic plots and then get down into the nitty gritty if you need to. All right, so let's do our imports. We're going to import X-Array as XR since that's our data model from metpy.cbook. We're going to import get test data so we can get some test data and all get the same plot. From metpy.plots, we need to import a few things. Remember that there's a structure to creating a plot with a declarative interface. First, you have your data plot types, like an arrow plot or an image plot or a contour plot. Those go onto a map panel, and then that map panel goes onto a panel container. So the container is sort of like the figure, the panel is like an axis. You can have a multi-panel plot. In this case, we're just going to have one data plot on one map panel in one panel container. But we still have to have all those elements, so we're gonna import those. We're going to import arrow plot. We're going to import the map panel and the panel container. From metpy.units, we need to import the unit registry. Oh, and we need an as XR there. And one more, metpy.plots. One thing that could have saved me at least one of those typos is using tab completion, which I always talk about trying to do so you don't have to type as much. Another thing that's great though is in the notebooks, we're able to rapidly fix and iterate on those. It took two seconds to fix those errors. Whereas the script, we'd be saving it, going to the terminal, running it, getting the error, going back, editing it. It's not that big of a time difference, but it is why I generally start writing something in a notebook, no matter what it's going to be in the end. But let's get on with it. We're going to open the data set using get test data. And we'll use our NAR example. And as a file-like object is going to be false. So in reality, you would put your data in here. This is just a way for us to get that test data. You may see a warning, especially if you just did the upgrade to 1.4, that it's downloading the latest test data set. That's okay, you'll only see it once. Now, if we look at the NAR data set, we're reminded that it's 292 points in X, 118 in Y, at 29 isobaric levels in one time. So those are our coordinates. If you need a refresher on coordinates, data variables, and working with all those things in X-Array, be sure to check out the last few MetPy Mondays. Now we can go down to the data variables and see what we've got to work with. Now because we tried to make this a small data set, since it does ship as an example, it's not a lot, we trimmed a lot down, but that's okay. We still have U and V wind, which we can use for an arrow plot. And that's really about the only thing that makes sense here for arrows. So let's make our plot. Remember, the first thing we're going to do is plot the data. So I'm going to create an arrow plot. This is an instance of the arrow plot object. And then we need to set different attributes. So I'm gonna set the data to be my X-ray data array, which I call NAR. The field is going to be what we want to plot, which is UWIND and VWIND. Now it's going to try to plot 
all the levels, which is not going to work so well. We want to plot one level. In this case, I'm going to choose the 500 hectopascal level. And let's go with that. Next, we need a map panel to put the data on. I'm going to call it panel. It's an instance of the map panel object. I'm going to set the area. We do have some of the default areas like US. I like a particular view, which is minus 120, minus 75 longitude, 25, 50 latitude. And that is in the projection of Lambert Conic Conformal. Now you don't have to specify the area or the projection, you'll get sensible defaults. But I like this particular view, so I'm going to specify it. What layers do we want? I want the coastline, the country borders, and the state's borders. Oh, we missed a close quote there. Panel title, I'm gonna call it declarative arrows, hello, MatPy 1.4. And now we need to put the data plots on that map panel, which is a list, and it's got one thing in it, which is our arrows. And finally, a panel container, like a figure, to put the map on. The panel container is PC. We could set the size of that if we wanted to, something like a 10 by 8. We need to set the panels that we want to show. Again, we just have one, which is panel. And then we call pc.show. And we let that work for a little bit. And we get this plot, which is great but there's a lot of arrows on there. I can kind of get a general sense of the flow here, but not really across most of the US. So we need to decimate this data a little bit. With arrow.skip, we can specify in the x and y dimension how many points we want to skip. I'm gonna skip five in each direction. And now we can see we've got these two anticyclonic flows showing up. So as you can see, making an arrow plot, though it's not horribly hard with just plain matplotlib, this reads much nicer. It's much easier to put together a quick plot and not have to worry about all the details of working with X-Array data arrays and data sets, just using the MatPy declarative interface. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MatPy Monday.